on behalf of all the co-authors, I uh, present this paper, which as the title suggests, looks at the link between household food production and uh, child dietary diversity in Nepal. The main motivation for this paper is to look at the link between what uh, farm families grow and uh, their child's dietary quality. So many studies have shown a um, positive link between what farm families grow um, and what their children consume. And um, some studies have suggested that this association holds, but only if households live afar from markets. So to test for other potential um, roles of mediating factors, this paper uses two rounds of um, survey data from Poshan, which is a large and nationally representative uh, survey data, to test uh, two main hypotheses. First, is that a farm production is linked to dietary intake, but only for uh, older children. Uh, the rationale is that for older children above two years of age, they have diets uh, similar to that of their families. So if households um, eat what they grow, children are more likely to do the same, as opposed to younger children under the age of two who require uh, special feeding and uh, caring practices. Um, and, and those needs are uh, less likely to be fulfilled even after having access to markets or with households growing a more variety of food. And um, it is also indicated in the poor IYCF in complementary feeding practices in South Asia in general and uh, specific to Nepal. The second hypothesis is that farm production is linked to dietary intake for uh, poorer households. Uh, we expect poorer families to eat what they grow because they have um, lower purchasing power than uh, richer households. So um, richer households have the options of uh, buying food in the market um, uh, given there's access to market to fulfill their consumption needs. The two main outcome variables we look at are whether child consumes uh, four out of the seven WHO food groups, which is also the uh, cutoff for minimum dietary diversity uh, for children under the age of two. But our sample includes children under the age of five, so we use this indicator uh, for uh, all the children in the sample. And the second outcome variable is whether a child consumes uh, each of those uh, seven food groups. So our exploratory analysis using portion data set show that children in uh, poorer uh, households have lower dietary diversity score as compared to children in richer households. And in this bar graph, we see both the median and the diamond markers here represent the mean for child dietary diversity score. Um, so the question here is whether households can grow more food to fill this gap for poorer children so uh, to improve their um, dietary diversity. Our exploratory analysis also show that for children under 23 months of age, they have lower dietary diversity as compared to uh, older children. Again, uh, the question is whether households own farm production can fill this gap for younger children to improve their dietary diversity. So the first thing we look at is the link between farm production diversity and whether child meets the minimum dietary uh, diversity modified by child age and household wealth. And we define farm production diversity as total number of food groups that households grow um, and total number of food species that households grow and whether households grow any food. That is whether there are farmers or non-farmers. And the second thing we look at is the link between production of each of these uh, seven food groups and its consumption, again modified by child age and household wealth. When uh, we use minimum dietary diversity as the outcome variable, we use logit model with VDC and your fixed effects. Here the VDC uh, fixed effects is to control for uh, geographical variation. And the main uh, coefficients of interest here are shown in blue where the main predictor variable is the um, farm production diversity variables that I just described. And this includes a wealth quintile as the mediating variable and the interaction between wealth quintile and each of the uh, farm production diversity variables. And to uh, test for mediation of child age, we split the sample into five different child age categories. 
and for um, consumption of individual food groups as the outcome, the basic specification model is the same, except in, in this case, the uh, predictor variable is production of um, each of those uh, seven food groups, and the rest is the same. Um, this is our first set of the main results, and to draw your attention to just columns three and five here, we see that uh, when households grow more number of foods, they have higher odds of meeting minimum dietary diversity for uh, older children in 18 to 23 month and 24 to 59 month age group. And for the same age groups, we also see that richer households have higher odds of meeting minimum dietary diversity. And if you look at just the column three, we see that it's, uh, the results uh, hold, but only for poorer households. And if you look at columns one and two, which is for the younger cohort, uh, we do not see any association between production and consumption. And you will also note that uh, the sample size for the younger cohort is a lot smaller than um, for the older cohorts. So um, what we see is uh, the results it could be an artifact of the small sample size. So we test for that using larger sample and still find no association between production and consumption, um, except um, that uh, richer households have higher odds of meeting um, minimum dietary diversity in the 6 to 11 month age group. And for columns 3 and 5, we uh, see that the results still hold as before. And this is the second set of the results uh, for individual food groups. And again, looking at the last three columns, uh, we see that when households grow vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables, other fruits and vegetables, um, eggs and dairy, they have higher odds of uh, children consuming these food groups for the older um, age groups. And we don't see any association for meat, legumes, nuts and seeds. Now if you zoom in on the food groups that are positively associated, we see that for vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables, it is positively associated, but only for older children and at lower levels of wealth. And for this age group, we see that richer households have um, higher odds of feeding vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables. Um, but for um, other fruits and vegetables, uh, we see that it's positively associated, but only at lower levels of wealth. Similarly, for dairy and eggs, um, the association is positive for older children, um, but for dairy, we see that this holds for uh, poorer households and uh, richer households are more likely to feed more dairy. Um, as opposed to eggs, we see that across all the different age groups, richer households are more likely to feed eggs. So in, in summary, um, agriculture production diversity is positively associated with child dietary diversity for older children in uh, poorer households. And uh, for individual food groups, um, for the food groups that are positively associated, we see um, for eggs um, that is positively associated for older children and at all levels of wealth. Um, for Fruits and vegetables and dairy it is also positively associated for older children, uh, only at lower levels of wealth. So to conclude, the findings imply that uh, farm diversifying programs that are aimed um, to um, improving child dietary diversity uh, may see um, more effects if for children above 18 months of age. And for younger children, um, perhaps more um, other approaches or interventions may be needed to improve uh, diet diversity and diet quality. Also for older children, um, more benefits of these nutrition interventions may be seen if it is targeted to uh, poorer farming households that live far from markets. Um, and finally, um, for uh, the food groups that are positively associated, except for eggs, um, fruits and vegetables and um, dairy um, are mediated by wealth. Thank you.